Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Dominic Peterson, a.k.a. Duck Zone 503, covering everything about Oregon football, man, from recruiting, breaking news, game results, game predictions, fan chats, uh, hope, hoping to get players in here eventually. And uh, this is my second video. Uh, I did a preview of the Alamo Bowl on my first video I ever did. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. Go ahead and see. Uh, I did it about 24 hours before the game. Now this is 24 hours after the game. What I like to do is I like to watch the game originally, enjoy it, record it, then watch it again, write notes throughout the game. Um, write notes originally when I originally watch it as well and then go through it. So I'm here to review and recap it here. Uh, this is uh, the review and recap of the 2021 Alamo Bowl versus, um, uh, or featuring Oregon versus Oklahoma. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, the final Oklahoma 47, Oregon 32. Uh, both teams coming in with coaching turnovers. Um, this was a game about who wanted it more. And, uh, you know, I, I, in saying about who wanted it more, I honestly think uh, Bob Stoops coaching uh, Oklahoma yeah, uh, you know, he. I think I think that gave a little bit more incentive, uh, for incentive for Oklahoma to want this game a little more. Um, you know, Oregon. You know, was still we're still in the middle of finding all our coaches, and we know these coaches that we have, man, they're bouncing right after this game. To be honest, they're really just doing this for a check. To be real with you, I mean, these, these guys. If it wasn't for a check, they wouldn't be coaching this game. They'd be on to their next job. So. Let's just let's just keep it real here. It's about business that these guys did. But, you know, I'm glad I'm glad they finished strong in that second half. You know, this first half, um, you know, it gave me worries. It gave me a lot of worries about the defense as well. I, I know I know it's a thing on Twitter. A lot of people are talking about about the defense. So is that something to worry about? And I'll get into that later in the video. But, you know, the first half was de definitely very suspect. Thirty to three. It looked like the Utah games again. And, 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 and I, I do want to know, uh, Oregon was without thirty five players. Uh, three defenders got hurt within the game, uh, including Noah Sewell with concussion injuries. He did not play the second half. And then uh, 48 total scholarship players played. So uh, 48 players, that's not that's not a good amount <laughs> at all. So, um, you know, there were injuries and there were a lot of young players. So, you know, there was going to be struggles. You knew that coming in as an Oregon fan. But, um, you know, the second half, you did like what you see. Uh, you, we definitely outcompeted Oklahoma in that second half. Uh, you like you like to see the team went out with a fight. You know, you wanted to see something. You wanted to see something happen. So that was great. Um, you know, so let's get into it. Let's break it down, man. Let's break it down. So let's get into the first half, man. Let's, let, let's start out in the first quarter. So um, the first quarter was not that uh, not that great for Oregon offensively. Uh, Anthony Brown came out really inaccurate. Uh, you could tell the young wide receivers. I mean, Dante Thornton, man, hit you right in the hands. Couldn't catch it, man. Bounce, uh, tip drill, Oski, 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 <laughs> tip drill. Uh, you know, he, uh, what's up, Luna? Sorry, my cat, y'all. <laughs> what's up, boy? But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, hit him right in the hands, man. And, um, you know, it ends up getting intercepted. Uh, you can tell these young receivers, they're really talented, man. Um, uh, I, I honestly believe these young receivers are have a higher ceiling than the receivers that we had, the Johnny Johnsons, the Jalen Red. No disrespect to them. They're great, great players. But, I mean, um, I think Troy Franklin was the highest wide receiver we've, we've ever signed. And um, uh, Dante Thornton uh, yeah, will join him as well. And Chris Hudson's a player to note as well. Uh, very young, great receivers. But you could tell these guys coming out were very shaken, uh, weren't catching balls that well in the first quarter. Um, Oregon D did a fairly good job, though. Um, it was six to three at the end of the first quarter. Um, Oregon's defense was uh, d doing what I thought. My preview, uh, I, I said we, I thought we could handle Oklahoma's run game. Now that didn't hold true, and we'll get into that. But um, you know, the first quarter, uh, Oregon's defense was playing well, and uh, Oregon's offense wasn't moving the ball. And I was, I was like worried about that, and I was, I was thinking, you know, it just kind of reminded me of the Utah game. So then we get into the second quarter, and this by far this was the worst quarter for Oregon. Oklahoma came out firing, firing deep, and um, once they connected deep on that uh, uh, touchdown to Mims, it really opened up the run game for him. Um, let's just go over the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, they will, they got outscored twenty four to zero. That's something to note as well in the second quarter. Um, let's go let's go ahead and go over the first half stats. I wrote the first half stats down here. So here we go. Um, so in the first half, um, 
like I said, the, the, the deep pass to Mims really opened it up for Oklahoma. And then Kennedy Brooks uh, had 127 yards of rushing at the half, 127 yards of rushing. Now, that is just nuts. Um, so Oregon had 205 total yards there. Um, Oklahoma had 312 total yards. So as you can see, Oklahoma's offense was do uh, dominating. Uh, I told you guys that I think our uh, Oklahoma's offense was better. Um, but giving up 127 yards rushing, I didn't see that. I just – I thought Oregon's front – I know we were kind of missing some players, but still, uh, DJ Johnson, um, you know, Noah Sewell, I, I know he only played a half. Um, you know, so we can say there's players out, but, you know, I, I expect these guys, man, they're highly recruited to do better than 127 yards rushing at the half. Um, Oklahoma had 129 yards passing. Uh, Oregon had 115 yards passing. Um, you know, Oregon was struggling again. Uh, Oklahoma, we were containing. I was very impressed with Dante Manning and TriQuest Bridges. Now, Bridges did kind of struggle at times and got scored on a few times there. But um, overall, uh, you know, with those young guys, man, they, they, they held their own against Caleb Williams. So 183 yards rushing here um, at the half overall for Oklahoma. So Caleb Williams is running the ball as well. So Oregon just couldn't handle the rush. And that's been uh, – a thing in the past, man, they, that, that's something that, that the early 2010 teams couldn't handle. You know, Stanford would come and run, and on, run on them. The Auburn teams, you know, they would run on them and LSU, things like that. So, you know, it was sad to see. You know, I know we were, we were down guys. We don't have flow. You know, we don't have popo and, you know, things like that. But, you know, they, it's still – I don't think – oh, given almost 200 yards rushing, man, I don't think, you know, the recruits we have still shouldn't be able – that shouldn't be a thing, you know, and I really think that's – that's why you were down 30 to three in a half. Um, the turnover battle here, uh, that one interception in the start was the only turnover. Oklahoma was plus one in the second half. And another thing I noted uh, when I looked at the halftime stats, Travis Dye was averaging 8.2 yards per carry. Now, <laughs> I know Brian McClendon was the wide receiver coach, and he probably wants his young receivers to get a chance here and open it up. But I know that's what – Oregon fans really want to see too. And that's what happened in the second half. We'll get into that, but man, if you got a running back that's averaging almost a first down every carry, I mean, look at Kennedy Brooks. That's what he was doing. And um, you know, you got to go to the man uh, and, you know, Anthony Brown um, Cardwell didn't really run the ball that well. Um, we'll get into that, but yeah, that's the first half there. And um as I watched the first half, I just wanted to cover a key point, and this is an opinion, opinion I put out on Twitter as well. Uh, just watching the first half and Anthony Brown, um, and the fact that the staff never put the young quarterbacks in, I just think that Cristobal and the staff just couldn't develop talent. And that's just an opinion of mine. And, and let me know in the comments if you if you agree or disagree with me. And uh, But they could recruit. They, I mean, I, 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 th I, I said this in my last video. I think Cristobal could recruit better than – any organ uh, coach I've ever seen or, or, or ever, uh, uh, you know, looked up, you know, in the history of organ coach. So, you know, they could recruit, but no, uh, you got to think about it. Uh, Cristobal never bring in a quarterback. You know, you got to think about Herbert was um, from the, the Helfrich staff. So he never, he never had a quarterback. You got to think about it. Helfrich never got fired. He would have kept Herbert and made him, you know, and stuck with him. Um, you know, and we'll get, I'm going to get into another video with Bo Nix and that, and this whole transfer quarterback situation with Oregon, I'm really sick and tired of it. And that's my own opinion, but you know, and then you look at the receivers, you know, coming in, not ready. I mean, I know they're freshmen, but it's the end of the year and they, you know, they come out kind of scared now. Now don't get me wrong. They played really well at the end of the game. We'll get in the second half here, but the first half, man. You know, you kind of see it coming with freshmen, but it's the end of the year. And, uh, you know, you just want to see better, a little bit better development. And also, uh, this is another thing. This is another opinion that uh, you guys can think think about is uh, KT. I mean, I know he's got injured, but uh, he was not as dominant watching him as people make him seem. Now, he's a really great player, and I think he's going to be awesome in the NFL. But uh, that's another thing to know. I think in the NFL that KT is going to go off. I think whatever team he lands in the NFL coaches he gets, he's going to develop into the monster player he really is. But at Oregon, you know, you watch him and he was good. Don't get me wrong. And he had really good games like the Rose Bowl and the Pac-12 championship and stuff like that. 
but he, he, he you know, that's, I think that's why Aiden Hutchinson is, is jumping him, especially in the PFF. Uh, they have him going number one. So he played a full season. And, and, you know, you can't knock him for injuries. It's not his fault. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, um, you know, watching Aiden Hutchinson and compared to Kayvon in college, I would take Aiden as well over, over Kayvon. I'm a, I'm a Duck fan. Yeah, I keep it real, you know. So that's just something that, uh, you know, I wanted to cover in the first half. So let's get into the second half. So third quarter, uh, I was really impressed, man. I was really impressed with uh, Oregon had came out. And we seen things that Oregon did not do the whole season. I mean, we just opened it out. I was like, let's go, man. And these receivers woke up. They're like, all right, you know, we're not making mistakes. Oregon could have easily laid down 30 to three, you know, like they did to Utah. You know, just not put points on the board and just been like, whatever, it's been a good season. But they didn't. They came out firing. I was really glad to see that with these young players. You know, it gives, you know, all these Oregon fans, you know, it's kind of like an exhibition game in Oklahoma. We're all looking forward to 2022. And we're just we're just happy to see how they came out in the second half. At least I was, you know, I, you know, um, <laughs> I, I was really happy, man. I was really happy. And Anthony Brown, man, he was connecting on these passes. He played really great. And I was like, here we go. This is AB in Ohio State. Like, and UCLA too, he played great. Really opened up the pass game. Yeah, man. Uh, um, so Oregon outscored Oklahoma 22 to 14 in the third quarter, 22 to 14. That's great. Um, but they still couldn't slow down Oklahoma's run game. That's that's something I noted in the third quarter is uh 14 points. You know, you score 22, but giving up 14, that's only an eight point differential. And when you're down 33, it's not really helping. Now, if you would have scored 22 unanswered, it's a different ball game from there but they, they couldn't uh, stop the run game. So going into the fourth quarter, at this point, the game's pretty much over. Um, one thing I noticed, Anthony Brown got every snap, and that's something that was irritating me, and I wanted to tweet, and a lot of people were tweeting about, was, why are you not getting these, these young uh, quarterbacks in? And I understand it was a fairly close game towards the end there, but still, you're down more than two possessions. Get the young guys in, especially at halftime when you're down 30 to three. I was especially surprised seeing Anthony Brown. I mean, I've seen a tweet that somebody said there was groans in the crowd when Anthony Brown came in. And I was a season ticket holder and I went to uh, most of the games. And especially at that Cal game, man, uh, when you got people booing, it's like, come on. So that's something to note about this coaching staff is they really stuck to their guns on these older players, too. I mean, you can see these young players are really talented, you know. Um, in the fourth quarter, Oregon outscored Oklahoma seven to three, but you know at that point it was pretty much over. Something I noted: uh, Oregon outscored Oklahoma twenty nine to seventeen in the second half. So Oregon Oregon beat Oklahoma in that second half. You know, you didn't if you just didn't have the most you know really bad first half, it could have been a different ball game for Oregon. But at the end of the day, you know, um, it ended up forty seven thirty two Oklahoma. And congrats to Oklahoma. Um, one thing I noted is their D-line really played really well. Their D-line is, 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 is really impressive. Uh, I know they had some guys missing on their side as well. And they really, you know, besides Travis Dye, they shut down Oregon's run game pretty well and, and uh, stopped them up front. And, and same with their O-line. Their O-line pushed Oregon's young guys around and opened up holes for Kennedy Brooks. And uh, shout out to them. Uh, you got to give it up to them. Shout out to Oklahoma. They played a great game. All right, so that covers pretty much the whole game. Now, I'm going to review my keys from the, uh, the game. I had some keys from the game in my last video. I had about three keys that I wanted to go over. Now, uh, my first key was win the turnover battle before the game. And uh, Oregon didn't for force one turnover, and they didn't force one sack. That's something to note there. Um, coming into it, Oregon is actually top 20 in the nation uh, in forcing turnovers. And Oklahoma was uh, – top 10 in the nation at number seven in the, uh, in the nation and forcing turnovers. So both teams are really good. And that's why I thought whoever won the turnover battle here will win the game. And that ended up did coming true eventually. Um, it wasn't a, a back and forth turnover battle. Not a lot of turnovers here, not a lot of sacks either, but um, not a really defensive battle at, in, in any sort of matter. That's why I really thought um, whoever got more turnovers, but it was plus one Oklahoma at the beginning of the game. They got a tip pass as I, as I uh, covered there. Um, so then my second uh, point here was defend Oklahoma's deadly pass game and Oklahoma came in averaging about 265 yards, um, passing yards a game. And that was number 30 in the nation, uh, top half in the nation there. And Oklahoma, 
um, came in averaging 38 points per game in the uh, uh, top 10, and they definitely surpassed that. But I just want to cover that uh, Caleb Williams looked really good as well. But um, Oregon Oregon actually um, defended Oklahoma's pass game really well, and I'm, I'm actually, actually really impressed by the young corners. Um, they uh, they only had 242 passing yards, Caleb Williams did, but, um, you know, held, holding them under their average, I did not expect that. And, they, and that did happen. Um, you know, that didn't help really Oregon because they did give up so many rushing yards. So, um, you know, Bob Stoops really exploited that. And that's probably why they're under their passing yards because they ended up just rushing the ball, especially in the second half than when they won the milk clock. Um, so that kind of, you know, that stat really doesn't matter. But I, I was impressed fairly, fairly impressed. Okay, and then Oregon needs to run the ball. So Oregon came in averaging 203 yards rushing a game. Uh, Oregon, uh, Oklahoma held Oregon under their season average with 191 yards. Um, like I said, like I said, um, you got to give credit to Oklahoma's D-line. Um, so 191 yards rushing this game. Uh, that's under our season average. And, uh, you know, it's something I didn't see. And, and, and Die ended up with 18 carries this game. And uh, maybe they were saving him for the draft because, you know, I think he, he is going to go try for the draft. And I think he's going to be an excellent player. Um, maybe an Austin Eckler type player, but you know, I think that's maybe why they didn't carry him with much, but when you're, you know, he, I checked at halftime, he was averaging eight yards to carry. You got to keep going with the man. So let's just get to my final thoughts on the game here. So the D looked really bad uh, tonight and that, you know, it's something to melt there for the uh, going, going into next season, because these are guys that are going to be playing, um, you know, and, and looking for better roles next season. And, you know, you hope to see a little better. I mean, 47 points a game in the game is not, not that great, you know? Um, so zero sacks, zero turnovers. That is something to note. I think Oregon played and fought well in that second half and didn't lay down. Um, something to note here, uh, Travis Doy, uh, <laughs> Doy, <laughs> Travis Dye joins Royce Freeman, LaMichael James, Kenyon Barner, and Derek Lavelle with 3,000 plus rushing yards in Oregon football career. So that's something to note. Congratulations to Travis Dye. Uh, dude's a warrior, man. Dude runs very hard for his size, man. You, you look at him, you wouldn't think, you know, he runs as hard as he does. And he, he, he's, he's, he's great, man. He loves Oregon, man. And, and shout out to his brother. I was a big fan of his brother as well. So shout out to the Dye bros, man. Thank you for everything you did for Oregon football, man. Um, so uh, Anthony, Bra Anthony Brown actually played well overall in his last game as a duck, and you got to give it to him, man. Um, you know, I'm not the biggest Anthony Brown fan, but I also don't hate him, man, but just because everything he did, man. I mean, he went, he, he's the only Oregon quarterback that went into Ohio State and won as a duck. And for just for that, and I was there for that. Um, I, I took my dad for his birthday, and you know, his, his birthday is around that was around that time, so you know, I got him plane tickets, I got the tickets, and you know, I <laughs> We went out there and we had a fucking awesome time, man. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a great moment to take my dad out there and, and experience it. Uh, probably the best individual win in Oregon history. And that, that's why I won't hate on Anthony Brown. And the season didn't end how he did, but look at, he had 306 yards, three touchdowns passing and one interception. I mean, as I, I was at the beginning of the game. I mean, he was firing it out there. So he went out and did his thing and I'll, I'll forever respect him. I won't put him in my top five quarterbacks in Oregon. I, I won't do that, but. I, I respect the man of who he is and, and, and what he did here, uh, no doubt. Um, looking back at the season, you have to appreciate the ten, uh, the ten win season. I mean, ten wins as an Oregon fan is amazing, and like I said, the win at Ohio State to top this off is or at the beginning was 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 amazing. You know, it was a great feeling. And uh, looking forward, I, I'm just I'm just uh, looking forward to the 2022 season, you know how landing and the staff will mesh together. You know, it's a young staff. I know these guys all know each other, you know, and they all kind of have a background and um, how well will they recruit compared to the Cristobal era? Because Cristobal, man, they were getting these guys and, you know, um, you got to get these blue chip recruits if you want to win a national championship. And I know Oregon fans want that daddy, man. They, they're hungry for it, you know? So, yeah. So I, I'm just interested to see how they recruit. And then, you know, I, I, I and then, a lot of people are saying that there are defensive issues in 2022, and I'm going to be honest with you, in my own opinion, I don't think there will be, okay? These guys that we've seen tonight were young. You know, these guys were all on their third string guys in certain positions. You know, they're young, 
And we're playing Oklahoma, man. I, no doubt Oklahoma's got good guys. I know they, they got coaching turnover and turnover and guys leaving too, but like, come on, man. I mean, they got Bob Stoops. They got that uh, revenge game they want from 2006. And they wanted it just a little bit more. You could tell. So, you know, and I, I don't think they're, they're defensive issues. I mean, uh, look, you get flow back. You got an experienced D-line with Popo, Dorless, Swinson. I mean, you get all these guys back on the D line, okay? And the, these guys, that the, these guys, these guys are beasts. DJ Johnson might be back, okay? Bossa, um, you know, he he's gonna be an amazing player. He was a young guy. Manning, you, yeah, you know, you got all these guys. The secondary, you know, six three, uh, you know, Bridges was was uh six three three star. Manning was a six foot five star. I mean, these guys, these guys are scary. So uh, Sewell and Flo, I mean that. Those are probably going to be the best linebackers in the nation next year. So to say there's going to be struggles, I mean, off of one game, uh, you know, no. I mean, look at the 2020 season. Look how bad the defense struggled. And now look how much they improved this season. You know, in Ohio State, they, they played fairly well. So, you know, I, I think these guys are young. You know, they had their struggles this season in the 2020 season. It's been a very young team these last couple of years. And they're going to get experience, you know. And they're, you know, and they got a very tough schedule. You know, it's going to be great. Uh, wide receivers also look deadly. That's another thing to look forward to, man. On the offensive side, you got uh, uh, Troy Franklin, the freshman. Uh, he was a four-star, number three wide receiver in the 21-21 class. Then you have Dante Thornton, a freshman. He was a four-star, number seven wide receiver. So you got the number three receiver and the number seven receiver in last year's class on your team. Then you got um, Hudson, sophomore. He was a four-star, and he was a four, uh, the number one forty, uh, the number 41 wide receiver in the 2020 class. So these guys are, are top 50 in the nation, top 10 in the nation that you got. So, you know, and then another thing is who's going to be QB1, and I will be doing a video about that in the future, and I'm hoping to bring on some people to talk about it as well. And when the staff's all filled out, uh, it's mostly filled out. I think all we need is a wide receivers coach. I think that's the only thing we're, we're looking for from at this point. But once it's all filled out, Oregon, uh, the University of Oregon officially announces these coaches and is confirmed. I will do a video on that as well. Also, my thoughts on Bo Nix and the QB situation and who I want as QB. I'll be doing a couple more videos and recruiting videos throughout the offseason. And now it's the offseason. That's especially what I'm going to be on. So, you know, everybody, I, I want to appreciate everybody for watching. That wraps up this video here from the Alamo Bowl. And, uh, you know, you got to give it to the Ducks, man. They, they really battled hard. And it's always go Ducks. You know, I'm always here for the long ride, whether we go 0-12 or 12-0. I'm always going to be a Duck fan, man. Um, you know, I was born and raised, and I will never switch up. And you got to give it to them. And I'm not going to hold you guys no longer. If you guys love talking about Oregon football and, you know, you guys have your thoughts, let me know in the comments. Like this video. Give me a like if, if, if you enjoy my videos. And go Ducks, baby. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Join the family. Doug Zone 503. Go follow me. I'll follow you back most likely. Let's get it, man. Go Ducks.